It's the old Doctor Who show, episode number 13, The Ark in Space. Go forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. You couldn't control my mind before, and you certainly can't control it now. Would you like a jelly, baby? The TARDIS, when working properly, is capable of many amazing things. The first polarity of the neutron flow is that the TARDIS will be free of the force field. Well, the TARDIS is more than a machine. It's a genetic machine. It's like a person. Resulting reaction is fighting. Are you ready? All right, welcome back to the old Doctor Who show, uh, the show where we watch classic episodes of Doctor Who and talk about them or review them. Uh, my name is Eric. And I'm Dan. Two of us together, we make up this uh, this show. How are you, Dan? I'm doing well, Eric. How are you doing? And I only see you every three weeks. We hardly talk anymore, Dan. It's only the you times know, that we actually face each other in combat and the know, times that we do podcasting. That's true. Yeah. You know, well, it's we better than a, it had been, so yeah. this is good. We do have our mur- murder fight club that we do on the side. We're not supposed to talk about that. No, you're not supposed to talk about talk uh, murder about that. fight club. But if you guys want more information, go to ourmurderfightclub.com. dot com. Um, anything else? Was there something else we were going to talk about? Uh, well, in continuing with the theme of random the thing, pod- I started watching Fargo. That's very good. Um, but yeah, Is go it good? on. Little Colin Hanks action going on there. Yeah, I was. I, I have. I don't, have you seen it? No, I haven't seen. I it. was super I like hesitant them. because. The movie Fargo is one of my favorite movies, and I, I just felt like, why are you doing a... You don't need to do a Fargo TV show. And then I saw the trailer, and, and the cast looked great, um, and it looked kind of good. And then I kept hearing from people that it was awesome. And I watched yeah. it. My, my wife and I watched like the first... I think we're up to the third episode or, or so. And it's it's really good. And Billy Bob Thornton is amazing, and I would recommend it. Phil Sloan, who was a friend of mine, had kept telling me to watch it and i finally did so thank you phil too well, that's nice so now dan a, you should watch it i just i i maybe i will i have so bob many... odenkirk's in it like did you I ever know. think like watching mr show that he would end up being in like um these amazing uh television shows like obviously breaking bad i'm assuming yeah y- you saw you know whenever whenever i started watching mr show in the mid uh to early 90s the first thing i thought when i saw bob odenkirk is future prestige drama actor yeah i think so. that was always that's, always that's it fair the comedy answer. was always secondary comedy is always secondary um no i have so many so many different series that i'm like trying do i want to finish it do i want to watch it i just started watching uh wayward pines which was i guess a, a short contained 10 episode sort of story um I'm only bringing that up uh, because our theme is uh secret the twin peaks pot the twin peaks yeah, podcast we're never going to do yeah. I think that there's somewhere there's two doppelgangers of us doing the Twin Peaks podcast that we should have done. <laughs> but instead, they're talking, about Doctor, they're talking about Doctor yeah. Who at the beginning of it. So Tell me about Wayward Pines, though. And we and for is... fans of the show that have not already deleted our podcast, <laughs> we will be brief. Um, is it a murder mystery? Like, is it set up? It is up... a mystery. It's not a murder. Well, okay, so there is a bit of a murder mystery to begin with, but they start resolving that pretty quickly. It's a... Uh, kind of mashup of Twin Peaks meets Truman Show meets uh, I don't know K-Pax. I had a better metaphor meets k Max. you gotta pay it forward <laughs> pay it forward that's it pay it forward um, but it's M-, M. Night Shyamalan um, and it feels a little bit like that there's, there's there's some good things it's actually it's it's intriguing it's interesting it's got a great mood there's a lot of really good actors in it I don't believe Matt Dillon for a second in anything he does and he's the lead come on so drugstore that, cowboy uh, okay anything he's done no I guess since Outsiders um, Juliette Lewis is in it and she's fantastic Terrence Howard is really good there's a and the supporting character is really this good. a Netflix so it's show? interesting or a it Showtime? was on, it was a no it was a Fox summer oh, okay. miniseries thing and now it's on Hulu so I'm I'm watching it there. Gotcha. Um but it's good. It's a it's really interesting. That's that's the latest thing I think. You know what else is on Hulu? Ark in Space. Uh, oh, hey. there it is. All right, do you there have anything is. else? Let's just jump into this uh Let's episode, do it. I think. Vape out. Oh, I pr- right. I should have talked about vaping. I have been seeing <laughs> today I haven't, but for the past 3 days I've seen people vaping everywhere. I went to uh, walk my dog at the library, public library, 8.30 in the morning. I'm pulling in. 
there's a woman. She's probably like eh, 43, something like that. She's in some kind of workout outfit. She, she looking at me weird. I'm kind of looking at her like, why are you staring at me? She can't hold it in anymore. And she just exhales this huge amount oh of God. smoke. 8.30 in the morning outside the library. So that's... So it wasn't, it wasn't like a tobacco thing? She wasn't I don't the know if it was tobacco, tobacco vape or not tobacco. thing? Because I'm seeing that everywhere. I see... My, I had I had family visiting this weekend. We went through New vaping. York. We did the whole. Yeah. They were all high. The whole no. We were we were walking through New York. I had the opposite experience where I saw people smoking actual cigarettes, and all I ever see anymore is yeah, people with those ridiculous, c- ridiculous I looking see. light up. Friggin- you know what I saw? What'd you see at the Acme parking lot, Dan? I saw no, two I dudes know. looking at a car, and I was like, "Look at those two dumb guys looking at that car," because that's how yeah. I, I I quietly judge all of you. Um, and then one of the dumb dudes that was looking at the car whips out a sonic screwdriver and starts vaping off of it. And then I was like, that's, oh, not, all right, that's pretty cool. <laughs> he's, he's our people. <laughs> Look at that dumb guy with a sonic screwdriver. Va- yeah, Wait, so, you're not dumb. You're awesome. So he had one, and I tweeted that. And then, like, some vape nation or, like, some like some of these Twitter accounts that just are searching constantly for the word vape was like, oh, wow, yep. was it – he the, the guy – or I'm assuming it's a guy. It could have been a woman said like oh was it just like the one in the show and at that point i was like oh do i re- let him do you know engage that there are different ones <laughs> depending on depending on the doctor and there is no specific yeah, you know so I, oh, yeah. I just said yes it was and it was and i guess if you're into that you can get mods or whatever for your uh for your vape pens to make them look like sonic screwdrivers that seems like a huge business like you can make light, now, lightsabers and sonic sure. screwdrivers and Eric, Eric, the question on everyone's lips right now is, which doctor's screwdriver was it? I think it was David Tennant's. I think it was yeah. it. I, I, but again, that's a pretty popular. I um, I saw it for like thirty. Like I was pulling out and like caught it, like you know, for like a half second of him. I didn't want to be staring at some seventeen-year-old <laughs> boy. Like you didn't pull, <laughs> you didn't pull yours out of your pocket and like so wave they, it at him frantically. Look, hey, hey, hey look, you kids want to party? Like I didn't want. It was not. <laughs> That was not happening. Yeah. All right. I think we've we've rattled on long enough. Homo sapiens. What an inventive, invincible species. It's only a few million years since they crawled up out of the mud and learned to walk puny, defenseless bipeds. They've survived flood, famine, and plague. They've survived cosmic wars and holocausts. Now, here they are, out among the stars, waiting to begin a new life, ready to outsit eternity. They're indomitable. Indomitable. What do you think you're doing, Harry? Sorry to contradict you, Doctor. Not a flicker of life. Suspended animation. There are no metabolic functions at all. I mean, look at him. Now, even in the deepest coma, the hair and fingernails continue to grow, the epidermis... Total suspension, Harry. You can't survive 10,000 years in a coma. 10,000? All right, this is The Ark in Space, 1974 to actually 1975. Mm -hmm. Uh, Written by Robert Holmes, although I saw it was originally penned by John uh, Lucarati. I believe you're pronouncing your name. Correct, John. From what the internet told me, it seems like it went through a couple writers before they could get a final script on yeah, this one. Yeah, it was like, it was uh, the gen- guy, John Lucarati, and then some other guy, but I think John's story was closer to what they wanted, and they ended up only keeping the concept of, like, a space station, and mm-hmm. uh, I think maybe the cryogenic part was in it, but otherwise, Robert Holmes pretty much, like, scrapped the whole thing and, and rewrote it. Uh, it was directed by Rodney Bennett. And a brief description here. Basically, the Doctor, Harry, and Sarah land in a seemingly deserted space station orbiting Earth. And they find that it's filled of thousands of human people in cryogenic sleep. Um, However, there's always a problem. The humans aren't the only life form that they find as a parasitic alien is wreaking havoc on the station. Uh, That's about it. We got a bunch of characters in this one. Pretty interesting people. As far as the story, this takes place immediately after uh, the events in Robot, 
and as we're going to see, this begins sort of a series of events or a series of a series of serials that are all connected. Um, where the end is immediately how the next episode starts. Yep. What did you think, Dan? Overall, I loved loved this episode. This is only one of the episodes I a classic Doctor Who episodes I'd seen prior to starting this adventure with you. So I I actually whenever it uh, first came on Netflix, I think, when they first got the rights to start airing it, this was one that was available. So I jumped into that since the only classic Doctor I knew was uh, Tom Baker, and I read that this was a really well-respected episode. So I had seen it a long time ago. Didn't really remember all of it, but I you know, I remembered uh, bits and pieces here and there. But now that I've seen it again, this has got to be one of the best episodes of Classic Who I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, it's got such a great, tight story. Um it's really interesting. Like you said, it's a. Uh, I had read too. Like Russell T. Davies said, this is his favorite of the classic run, and that Stephen Moffat also said this is his favorite Fourth Doctor story. So I guess mm-hmm. he's got something else that he likes more than that. And Tom Baker said this was his favorite uh, story that he was in, and, he, and uh, as we'll see, he he was in a lot. I love it. Yeah. I mean, we got um, just to run through some of the people. Like uh, we've got the Doctor. We've got Sarah Jane Smith and Harry Sullivan. First mm-hmm. time all three are really together. Um, you know, they were – Robot was really a regeneration story. So this is really the first true – This is the first travel story. Yeah, with with them. Um, yeah. You got the space station where you have uh, Vera, uh, Dune. Got a guy, a guy mm-hmm. named Dune. Guy I mean, named some Dune. of these names are great. Mwadib. I had to look some of these up because it's like, what? Your name's Libra? Yep. There's a Libri. Or something. He gets killed no. almost immediately. Oh, right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. There's Laser, who for some reason oh. goes by Noah. But if your name's Laser, I you, think... Yeah, call yourself Laser. Call that's me much crazy. cooler than the biblical reference that we're going to make. I think it's Lazar, as in Lazarus. So he's Lazarus, oh, but now yeah, he's Noah. I think that's where it's coming from. You're probably I, correct. Because uh, these guys, these guys write layer on sense, layer since, on layer. Since in a way, I guess he is coming back from the dead since he's... Sure. Yeah. Um, but either I will call him Laser. Uh, everyone else seems to call him Noah. <laughs> uh, you know, this is Space Station Nerva, but they all call it the Ark. Yep. Uh, you've got uh, Rogan or Rogine. I don't know how you're going to say it. That's the uh, guy who sacrifices himself. Oh, um, the, the technician. Yep. The day, yeah. And then Lysat, uh, also killed. Yeah. It's just like a really tight, uh, interesting story. I think we've talked about it before that I'm a huge fan of the Alien franchise. Uh, and Alien, in particular, is one of my favorite movies. And there's so much of this that is Alien. I mean, you have uh, uh, this derelict space station. You've got um, a creature that's embedding its offspring in a human host. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, coming out of it. You even had a scene in this where Sarah Jane is going through very tight... Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, what are they? Ventilator shafts or it's something. Ventil- She's yeah. running yeah. The, the power. And you have a... You know, that that's right at it. Or that will end up in uh, in the Alien franchise as well. I did see yeah. uh, – what's the – is it the last uh, Christmas episode, the Stephen Moffat one, where I had said, yes. like, oh, this that is a lot like – that was pure Alien. Yes. So somebody yeah. called I, – I had read that somebody called him out on that. Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that uh, Alien – the people that made Alien had asked Doctor Who's permission when they stole Ark in Space for – Oh, thing. that's so amazing. Sort of, and, you know, and definitely can see that. I mean, that there's definitely some sim- similarities throughout this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's so good. I mean, it, where, do you want to just start at the beginning? We, yeah, let's just, I mean, might as well. You've got, it's... like, I mean, Sarah Jane also has some of the best lines, I think, as far as uh, her character goes, where she tells she tells Harry Sullivan at one point that she's going to spit in his eye. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't well, remember Harry just exactly keeps calling the context, her, but yeah, she's. she's I think the, it's because he keeps calling her old girl the whole time. Yeah, there's and a she lot gets of weird, really sort upset of with weird that. back and forth. And I do like when Harry first in the very beginning, Harry racks to the TARDIS, and he's like, "Oh, I've gone mad. This is crazy." And uh-huh. she's like, uh, "Oh, that's exactly how I felt." But it's like, actually, no. You thought you were at a Ren no. fair. Uh, you were just right. <laughs> to be totally <laughs> cool with everything. But sure, I guess you were also freaked out. Yeah. Well, the only reason they're there is because Harry apparently messed with the helmet regulator and just sent them off yes, on a. So I guess they went too far route. into the future. Right. What is? So have we heard of the helmet regulator before? This is the first time okay. I've ever heard of it. Yeah, I, I think that's a uh, space talk for steering wheel. Yeah. 
And, so. and Harry, speaking of Harry, like, not only does he mess up the Helmick regulator, he just starts randomly hitting buttons. Yeah. Like, wherever he is. And obviously, this at one point causes Sarah Jane to get separated from them. Um, yep. And she ends up going on her adventure and getting put in some in her own cryogenic sleep. But, yeah, he's just sort of walking around and, and hitting stuff. Yeah. And it seems like the doctor's method throughout this entire episode of getting people to focus and do what he needs them to do is to berate them. Because he does that to Harry, too. Harry's like, I pushed a button. Which button? I have no idea which button it is. And he just yells at him until he figures out which button it may have been. Right. And I feel like he, he just kind of picked one. It was totally this one. Shut up. And he does the doctor does that to Sarah later on when she gets stuck in the ventilator, ventilator shaft and I, I votes her on. Another like uh, piece of the story that I really loved was the fact that the ship itself was in the future, but it was old. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like they make a you know the the fact that the uh, alarm clock was messed up because the um the worm had chewed through it and so they've overslept but at the time that it takes place they're actually on a ship from the past but the ship is actually way in their their future that civilization is way in their future. So I thought that was just an interesting little twist to be in a futuristic mm-hmm. spaceship from the 30th century I think that they said but it's actually old technology. They're much the They're much further than that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought that was really, really cool. Yeah. And I guess Space Station Nerva 2, this point, and we, we, I was going to talk about this at the end, but I think I want to uh, twist your arm a little bit, and I think we we should add um, the Cybermen story that's the last story of this season to it, because okay. it, once we get the, at the end of this episode... They leave to to fix the thing for the for the Ark in space. That mm-hmm. doesn't get resolved until okay. That Revenge of the Cybermen. Sure, thing. sure. Yeah, I actually even when we finish this one, it kind of ends with them uh, leaving via the transmat so that the Doctor <laughs> yeah, can figure cool. out what's right. to what figure out what's yeah. I don't understand to one figure thing. out what's going on on Earth and why that thing's not working. I liked that cliffhanger so much. I actually started watching the beginning of the next episode oh, just to see, what see how, just to see if they pick it up right yeah. from there, which they do. Like they you do. said, these just continue on, and that was actually yep. pretty cool. And so every, I watched the first yeah, fifteen of that. Every episode is going to continue on, so that's why I feel like, well, if we if we do all of them, but the last one to close that loop, we might as well just do. Yeah, Revenge I'm, of I'm down for that. But to jump anyway. to the end. They, they, the shuttle's been destroyed, so they can't get the humans to Earth via the mm-hmm. shuttle. Via the so shuttle. So they right. have to use the uh, matter transmitter, mm-hmm. uh, which apparently is broken. It's, it's yeah, not working exactly right. It's not working right. the way they want. So they mm. use the thing that's broken or not working to beam themselves down to Earth instead of taking Rather the TARDIS, the TARDIS? which is right next to them. But it's also yeah. like. Yeah, we're going to go to Earth to fix this thing. Oh, how are you going to get there? We're going to take the thing that's broken, you know, in quotes. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't, that, that was like, all right, I guess so. I don't understand yeah. why they didn't take the TARDIS. Maybe there is some reason that gets uh, talked about later. I think it has something to do Star with Trek? the writers. Okay. And I think it has something to do with the writers <laughs> in order to not have the TARDIS in the next episode. All right, okay. That's pretty much it. Um, um, so anyway, so oh, they, the other thing, starting off with this one though, from the very beginning, I loved the uh, the production design, the the sets yes, and the, and the outfits. set and setting, and the the outfits are very, they're, awesome. um, they're like a better version of what later Battlestar Galactica, the original series, it has a very similar sort of feel to those those costumes, mm-hmm. but this was done better. Even um, Star Trek, when uh, the first movie, first and second movie, when they came out, they had a very similar sort of silhouette to their. Um, their uniforms, but this was done better, which is very odd for Doctor Who. I think like some of the costuming is is terrible in in the classic series, but this looked great. No, it was, great. It was very it was very seventies. They had bell bottoms in space. Yeah, but, but that's still whatever. It's, still it's cool. It's great. It's it looked cool. really. I, really good. I made a note to myself too when um, after Sarah Jane gets uh, put in her sleep and she gets she gets put in their wear. Mm-hmm. I loved the outfits. Like I thought the the yeah. uh, clothing design was was awesome she did not like them however because she wakes up in a strange place she she gets separated from them uh gets put into this transmat gets put into cryonic sleep by the computer because it thinks that she's one of the humans right. that's supposed to be sleeping she wakes up she doesn't freak out that she woke up not knowing where she was she freaks out when she looks down and sees her outfit <laughs> <laughs> just freaks out she yeah, really didn't like i'm it. getting used to um i guess so we guess also learned in the first tight. episode that the doctor's scarf was made by Madame uh, Nostradamus. 
That's right. Which is a little fact for you people at home that want to write that in your dream journal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> include that. We also thing. we also find out that the doctor. I does I don't know if it continues on later or maybe maybe it had been in previous doctors and we just didn't really see it. But he seems to be able to pull a lot of things out of his coat at random yeah. times. Like he pulled out a cricket ball yep. when they needed a cricket ball. Which was a funny he, gag. Yeah. Which was a it was a good gag. When he, but he pulls out like an antenna to put his hat on it to distract mm-hmm. to see if the uh, the electric laser beam thing was going to shoot it. But I don't know. Is that a thing that he does later? Or has have previous doctors been just like? His pockets are bags of holding, and he just pull things if, out. I don't know if they've ever done that to the extent that they did here for comic yeah. effect, um, but certainly they could have. I don't think in any of the episodes that we saw they had. I don't recall it. Yeah, but then he, you know, he. Oh, and he a yo-yo, he pulls a like, yo-yo out. As yeah, well. and, and, so and it sort of was like a clownish type uh, thing. Yeah. but it it, it made me think really of like well. Tra- Patrick Trouton or something like that would have done something like this um, if he did or didn't. Yeah, that's when he, what, if he that, wasn't made, playing on his flute, makes me think of that exactly. <laughs> um, oh, the other thing I just wanted to note real quick is this is the first time, well, maybe, this is one of the only times I've ever seen the Doctor use the sonic screwdriver as an actual screwdriver. He oh, used yeah, it to perfect. open a vent with, de- like, actual screws turned. It's like, this is amazing. Yeah. Are you talking about the, the desk when they're taking the desk from being bolted oh, that's what, the yeah, 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 That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. He turns the screws with the screwdriver. I don't yeah. know. It's and, maybe and another, actually a laugh. While we're sort of talking about the beginning, too, like, this was really interesting because... The, there's no one on the ship, and so it 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 really creates this air of mystery. We don't really get Vera, I don't think, until episode two, right? That's I mean, right. Yeah, you, yeah. The, this, it's just oh, the three of them. Yeah, it starts out where you have a POV of the uh, was it Worm or Wor- Wor- uh, Wern? Wern, 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 W I R R N Queen, sort of attacking Dune. I guess that's who we're seeing as. Uh, but other than that, it's there's no one here, and they're trying to figure out what went wrong. Like, the oxygen is not working, and they have to fix the oxygen, and there's a defense system, and there's all these cool things, but it's only them. Right. It's just about them versus the space station, yeah. basically. And again, it was and, just, it's such a cool way to to set the mood and the atmosphere and everything. So Well, and, you know, they come into the, the cryogenic chamber, and, and all you see is these plastic molds. Uh, basically is what they look yeah. like, life-size plastic molds, and inside there are people. And you get a sense, even though you only see maybe like two vertical rows of uh, of people stacked around and doesn't you don't really see a whole lot, you get a sense that it's just massive. It's vast, that yeah. they're That they're going, you know, where in the class, in the current series, maybe they would have done a whole CG thing where you pan up and you see, like uh, new, the episode New Earth with the cat mm-hmm. nurses, and it's just a vast... Uh, store of people kind of like the matrix kind of people just everywhere this one you just do it by their their expressions you just get a sense of the scale of this place but they don't show anything which is which is great you don't need to when you have people able to do it like they do and so we end the first episode then uh where you see uh, see, a little cliffhanger they see sarah Sarah jane first right and they know that she's been uh frozen they try to figure out somehow to fix her or get her out and while they're going through the cabinets uh, the old insect, the old giant insect in the, the closet. That machine. old gag. Yeah, he was hiding out in the closet, and he falls. and Or she falls, I should say. And then uh, and it looks like it's coming to attack him, and yes. then that's the end of the episode. Yep. It's a good Which little fake super out. Super cool. The and then, so the second episode, we, all of a sudden, I'm not sure how this happens either, but I'm okay with it. All of a sudden, she gets activated, uh, Vera. Right. Because the aliens have messed, have just turned off the thing that would have woken them up. But she gets, yeah. she just happens to activate while they're there. Either, either turned it off or it's inadvertently turned off because it's an yep. old system or something went right. wrong. But right, okay. it's not it's not okay. waking them up. So That's she not. gets up and then they have like some kind of like, it looks like a kit you would get at Michael's or something for arts and crafts that is their med kit. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's this little plastic top. Day glow, lucite. Yeah. yeah, if you have your rubber bands and your uh, felt, <laughs> felt eyes or whatever. So she gets that. And I thought she was really uh, interesting and cool. Vera, yeah. but I did see something in uh, it was on it was on Wikipedia or it was some Doctor Who site where it was written that she was going to be um, uh, a black woman, a Jamaican woman, I think, and the director recast it and changed it to the actress that we got. Oh um, man, so I just thought that, that would have been s- thing that was actually in the script but didn't uh, make it to to air. That would have been amazing because one of the things I noted was. They talk about this is an ark in space that's taking all of humanity 
because you know so th- th- we find out that something has happened to the earth that's been irradiated and uh is going to be uninhabitable for uh thousands of years they've sent these humans a mix of all races and ethnicities into into space uh and wake up after and return to earth after it's um habitable again but there's only upper class white people yeah, well, that's all you see that's probably Entire how it would thing. go down though <laughs> i guess it's just upper yeah, class yes. white people as it, far as i could see so it would have been cool to have um someone of color sure, on the show yeah, specifically yeah. also because there is a not so subtle but an undercurrent of a uh, romantic love. Well, I guess they they say that specifically they're pair no, Noah and Vera were bear, pair bonded, yeah. but not. It wasn't just that the government said you two are going to be spouses. They actually had some affection for each other because yes. it made Vera's decisions harder because of Noah and it's for him as weird, well. So though. if it had been yeah. if it had been an interracial thing for that time period, it would have been fantastic. I thought that part was strange only because they do play up that they do have a relationship, and you see it. I mean, he. At the end, he sacrifices himself and kills all the mm-hmm. people for her, and he's constantly talking about her. But the fact that she says they're pair bonded, and the fact that these people are picked just sets up the fact that there's a higher form of government or someone else in control that's picking who lives and who dies, and not only who lives and who dies, but who mates with each other. So there's yeah. a whole like weird uh, sociological oh, well, thing going on as far as like you know who is chosen. It's obviously not all of Earth. People were left on Earth, especially when that guy, uh, uh, Rajin or R- Rogan or whatever, is pissed that he didn't die. Like he was like, we could have been on Earth and dead for a thousand years instead of like running around from these these space right. worms. I'd rather. Be I thought dead. that was like an interesting uh, thing that they brought up the fact that they were pair bonded as opposed to just being two people that loved each other. Yeah, but it did seem like there was there was more to it than just uh, you know. You did your true straws and had to be the mated for life, but you do you do hear some bit of the the government of the time because there's the voiceover yeah from plays. some some ridiculous operatic voice of some president in the distant past or or whatever it was uh, telling them that if you're hearing my voice yeah then... it's very much like Wally too like we're talking about Alien uh, but there's the whole yeah you know, the, that that is very similar in uh, in plot actually because they, they make that note one. that they also not only do they have Humans, but they also have uh, fauna, and uh, uh, they, they do mention that, right? That there, there's plants and things um, stored on the ark, not just humans. So they're going to rebuild life, and that includes all of life. I think they said that. Yeah. There's no animals that we. I don't. Seen. I don't recall that, but they could have said that. Yeah, sure. I think. I think so. Um, so anyway, that's so that's you, there's a, again, again, a really cool story going on throughout this whole thing about what happened to earth and as you said like solar flares have have made it uninhabitable that's, yeah that's right that's right and now they're they're uh they're eventually going to land and repopulate the earth so and, now vera is waking up part, parts of the crew yep. and she wakes up noah and so now we have not just what's going on with the ship and getting it working again because there was a whole you know low oxygen so they're getting that restored and yada yada but um now we have these new people, and, and Noah sees the three of them, the Doctor and his companions, as uh, kind of stowaways or, or yeah, to, he dilu- wakes up to, potentially diluting pissed. their... He's, he's cranky pissed. when he didn't have his coffee or tea. Yeah. And then before that, little... too, we, we when we first meet... Um, I keep forgetting her name. Vera. Vera. Mm-hmm. She's, med- she's a medical officer, which yeah. is great because the Doctor announces himself as the Doctor, and, and Harry is also a Doctor, so you have this scene of three Doctors... Uh, mm-hmm. Meeting, they make a mention that Harry is only allowed to work on sailors. I think that was a joke, but yes, now, he's he's, an, he's yeah. a naval, yeah, right. But then, do you think it was also sort of a joke because uh, on Carnival of Monsters he played uh, a sea captain or whatever of the thing? I don't. That maybe was me looking into it more. It's uh, a pretty good I meta should've. joke, but yeah. I don't know that was intended, right? Um, so anyway, so the, she, yeah. Uh, to to your other point, uh, laser blast, laser face. Uh, wakes up super pissed. Like he just yeah. starts accusing them of pop, you know, messing up his again the gene pool. There's gene some pool. like weird race. It's a little uncomfortable going on here. Yeah. Uh, they have to keep it clean. They don't like the look wait a minute. Of, yeah, because then we have the quasi like some kind Nazis of Nazis in the previous episode. There's a lot of Nazi stuff going on. <sighs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm looking at who in a very different way now. This is not okay. Yeah. So so he um. Yeah, he accuses them of sabotage or whatever. The doctor at this point, I think, real has the doctor already checked the solar stacks? 
by the point that he's this is when this is about to happen so so this is the, you're right Noah thinks that not only are they going to pollute their genetics they're also messing up with the systems and have uh, disabled it so it's Noah that goes to check on it because he's the one that gets touched by the the green monster with the eye thing that's yeah. in the in the solar stacks and that's when he start his hand right. and then starts he, he, changing. he starts to change I could remember if the doctor went first saw it and then Noah was like you're full of it and then he went to check I think you're right I think the doctor saw it but then it's yes then yeah. Noah goes down there and he's the one that actually gets, and so what's uh, happened too is um the doctor and um Harry another doctor are investigating mm-hmm. the creature that we saw at the end of the first one, realize that it's dead, uh, are able to get some information from it that it's... Uh, I think at that point they know that it's laid eggs, right? They find an egg pieces of an egg sack or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we start to realize that the, the, the thing has actually injected its eggs into a human host, which is very cool. Yeah. Did we ever see Dune? Because uh, what would happen oh. to is the... the uh, uh, creature no. would it put his eggs in Dune? The creatures would hatch, absorb him completely, right? right. And take all of his memories. And that's another thing. Not only are they uh, eating human bodies for uh, sustenance, they're also absorbing, absorbing all of the memories and all of that kind of stuff. So that's very cool. Yeah. But then after it dis- it dissolves or absorbs Dune, it touches this guy. But for some reason, then he changes that way as opposed to the way Dune would have changed. Well, there was two things. I mean, yeah, like so we don't we don't actually creation that these things do. Well, that's right. Because before we even see, before we understand what the the big waspy beetly things are, when they go into the solar stacks, there's like that monster that that touches Noah seemed like some sort of like bubbly like a liquidy thing with a big eye. It didn't seem like it looked like the yeah. same thing to me. And that's what touched him, and that started the whole transformation for maybe... I don't know. I don't know their entire life cycle reproductive system. Yeah, I really strange. should have like, done a little bit more of research. Like, I guess Dune has um, all of the eggs within him because they do mention there's a lot of these things. It's not just yeah. one, right? So there's a, there's a bunch yeah. of these things that hatch, and later on they're they're going to all get into the spaceship or the shuttle. I mean, you see some of them uh, as like uh, cocoons yeah. in one of the shots later yep. in, the, in the solar stack. That's right. Yeah, there's there's a lot of them that are going to happen. And the the given uh, obviously they look like uh, it looks like bubble wrap. It looks like green bubble wrap. It's green bubble wrap. But aside from the uh, limits of the effects that everybody always talks about, and who cares? It was really horrifying. I thought it was great. Like his transformation, uh, his reactions his were reactions fantastic. Were great, the way it was eating half of his face later on as yeah. it starts to yeah. progress. Really cool. Say, really you're right. Dark. You're right. Say what people will about you know the the sets or the effects not being great. For the most part, ninety something percent of the time, the actors they cast are so good, it really doesn't matter. And this is definitely an example of that. Where this guy, there's a couple of moments where he's overacting, but okay, whatever. But overall, you could actually see that this thing was taking him over, and he's fighting it. Just, just really, yeah. really good acting. Solid cool. the whole way and, through. And by episode three, now we've we're introducing these other two. Uh, they're both medical officers, right? Is one a medical, or are they now systems? One's a technician. Technician, yeah. right? Yep. So we've got uh, Rogan and Lysette are awakened, and they're like, "What the, you know, what the hell's going on?" And the doctor does something cool, where he actually hooks his mind up to the dead queen's mind, and he's able to see the last things that the queen saw. That's when we see the POV. Yep, and he, of the... he makes a reference that uh, gypsies had been or talked about the eye retaining an image after death. Uh, yeah, so it was it's always, not yeah, that far off from that, and... which I thought was yeah. very cool too. And I've seen yeah. that before. Um, trying to think, there's I think in uh, Jim Starlin's Warlock, they do they do something where a person recently dies and they're able to sort of uh, see the last take that. So yeah, so that's right. very cool. And then we we learn that Dune is. Uh, the host for all the eggs and mm-hmm. that it's absorbed all of Dune's things. Cause it, we get the, I am Dune line, which yes. uh, we are all Dune. <laughs> Is that, that's the other podcast. Yeah. And then a giant worm, you know, j- jumps up from the ground mm-hmm. and, and eats mm-hmm. them and sting uh, is there. Stings there. Yeah. Yep. I will kill him. Yeah. Um, really well done. Yeah. So, I mean, episode three was mostly about them dealing with what this alien threat is and, and more figuring that out as the uh, the Wirren are are kind of 
starting to mount an attack against them. Yeah. So that, that's that's pretty much all of Yeah, and then we learn, episode. too, uh, another thing why I like this story so much is it's not just black and white either that the Wern are bad and the humans are good. Like, there's, they yeah. make a point of having a monologue when um, uh, the... Uh, I can't... Vera. I can't get Vera's yeah. name. Vera and Noah have a conversation, and he explains, like, we didn't, we're not just attacking you to attack you. Uh, some human explorers earlier had left to the Andromeda galaxy right. and had destroyed their home world and had wiped out all the places where they would uh, give birth because I think they, they say they used cows or they used – not cows, but they used some kind of um, – what do they say? Like vegetarian? <laughs> yeah. They basically say cows. <laughs> it's cows. They basically kill uh, uh, people that don't eat meat. So this was really interesting for two reasons. So it's it tells you a little bit more about the Warren, that they live in space. They don't need air. Yes. They live in space, but they breed on terrestrial yes. planets. So this is – so he says that they had traditionally been using these basically cows mm-hmm. as their breeding vessels. Since they take all the knowledge of their hosts, they must not have been very intelligent creatures to that point. And good so it's at only now, milk. and very good. Yeah. <laughs> they lactate like you, and um, but yeah, that that is that's so an now. So now at this point, so, so now now after this battle with humans, uh, which Vera realizes, oh, this other this other uh, exploration mission that must have taken place before her, it actually worked. So this is you know must have been thousands and thousands right. of years ago because yes. it happened it, when before she went to sleep. So she's excited that it actually happened. But more to the point. It's only because humans had invaded, maybe uh, unintentionally wiped out the Warren um, from the point of view of the, of the Warren. Because they, my guess is they weren't very intelligent, but it's the introduction of humans and messing up their ecosystem that they now actually end up getting intelligence. Because right. they end up on this this arc and uh, use humans as their livestock. So it's, I think that's really interesting that it was you know humans. Yeah, it, it, intentionally or unintentionally, actually making the situation much worse. Yeah, it, it adds a level of complexity to um, to the story that you know you don't mm-hmm. always see. Sometimes it's just these are the this is the monster that we have to deal with and we have to kill it. Yeah. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, there was a great line that uh, Sarah too had uh, where the doctor's just sort of rambling to himself, and she just like it's like this like real funny beat where she just turns to the side she's like you know like nobody he just talks to himself because no one knows what he's talking about no one else will understand just, cuts, just hard cuts to, to him talking about it yeah I think somebody calls Harry a twit too I wrote that down I think Sarah Jane calls him a twit oh, d- yeah <laughs> she's, she's constantly well because I think I think it was at that point that she just they, they decided or they learned from the queen hey these things are uh, pretty much immune to anything but electricity yeah, because the um, you know the the sentry robot or whatever had had killed it, and they they're going to electrify the area around the bodies or the uh, cryogenic sleep chamber to try and, to make yeah. an electric fence and protect. Them. They don't have any power. The only way to get power, she's got the idea that no one's even listening to her. She just keeps saying like, "Hey, what? If, hey, uh, hey, yeah. no, nothing." So eventually, they listen to her, and she's got the idea they're going to take the engines from the shuttle. Oh, well, we should say like. Um, uh, Noah offers them a chance to escape. He basically yeah, says, he, "You guys." He offers a chance for them, the yeah, ones that are alive and awake at that moment. They leave, give up the rest of their thousands of. Uh, yeah, so obviously right. that's not really a choice they can make. Yep. So there is a spaceship or a shuttle aboard this. They're going to use the shuttle. They're going to electrify the area, and she's got to go through through <laughs> a very tight space. Uh, mm-hmm. So Harry is giving her the business on one end, and then she's going through it, and she gets stuck, and she doesn't want to keep going, and the doctor uses some reverse psychology or whatever on yeah. her. Telling Stop her, whining, girl. You're useless. Yeah, yeah. which you yeah. know drives her to come out, and that was that was kind of a funny scene, too. But then when, when she does come out, he has a heartfelt thing where he says, I'm I'm really proud of you. Yeah. You, you did a great job. And she realizes, oh, you, it was, she, you conned me conned. again. You're reverse. Right. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, I mean, what else we have? And then we have the um, the epic ending. Well, the, well, the ending where, yeah, so they need to set the shuttle off because uh, the Wern are going to get into the shuttles. So they're going to have it auto launch, but the only way to do it is to release these locks, but it has to be done manually. The doctor's going to do it, but the technician uh, sacrifices himself, knocks the doctor out, and dies in the takeoff. And that's, that's something that occurs throughout uh doctor who and especially becomes more poignant now it's a very 11th doctor sort of situation where he's realizing 
all of the people that he's inspired to kill themselves, basically. They, yeah, not only does the doctor two, try to make the... There's really two suicides in this, too. Because oh, you true. have his, and then you have um, uh, the Noah's. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's right, at the very end. make a point yeah. of whether or not he actually knew uh, what he was doing. And, and, and I think he, he does, because he they, did, they yeah. show him contact uh, Vera. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you're right. I mean, that's so like... It's, that's like a central like conflict of the 11th Doctor is that he's... All these people that have died because of him. Uh, not that he's done it, but he's inspired them to, to do it to prove themselves. But I don't know. It's just a... The Doctor doesn't take lives, but it, they still end up Yeah, and that whole that. gamble on the end, too. Like, how do they even know that they're all in the shuttle? And That was my... I had a note yeah. about that. Well, I didn't even know that they how they got in there because you don't see that they were coming in through they were coming in through in. the outside of the of the sh- of the outer ship they were in space around the outside of the station and going to come into the area where the shuttle was yes but we didn't actually see them get to the shuttle and there were also lots of them there so are lots i don't know of that them. but and I, I don't know that they got on this it was strange. they were so we just have to up, say, okay fine they, they show up a, a point where they're in the control room and you can see one of the external cameras and you can see them coming up and they hit the engine and blast them, and I think it, we were supposed to take from that they're keep, they're, they're going to keep going up that way until they were all in yeah. the shuttle, and then they leave and they they send them off. I did notice whenever the shuttle goes out and launches into space off of the station and then explodes, I think it's silent. I don't think they actually have sound on that, which is also another alien thing where they you know in space there is no sound. Right. So it's another one of these things like there, there's a lot of underlying. Uh, ideas that are used in other science fiction, right. fiction, but and, and, and alien. to that point, I mean, that would be you know there would be no sound. Right? That's right. That's yeah, right. So that's... But you know, but on a, on a very popular show like this, you could very easily get away with that and be like phaser sounds and right. poof, explosion. But they didn't. It was interesting. No, they're um, good job. They're very good job, Robert Holmes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this this ends uh, with uh, the uh, genocide of a whole race of, of aliens. I, I, yep. I'm assuming they're. This is that's it, how most right? episodes end. Yep. I mean, they don't make. Yep. They don't. Do they make a point of saying this is it? I mean, could these creatures no. be somewhere else? That's right. They don't say for sure. What a great. All, all we know is what a great enemy though that that absorbs your memories and everything else. Um, as well. As yeah, that was the only you. way. So that, that was the only way that they could actually formulate a plan of attack and know how to use the ship against them was because they had absorbed the memories now so did they have you a have hive, a villain that's... did they have a hive mind too they didn't say it didn't seem yeah. that they did um it was just that noah was their swarm leader right. so i don't know that he was controlling them it's just so much as he was their leader and they're gonna yeah. do what he says so very cool uh so at yeah. the end we then get uh they teleport down to earth that's how this episode is going to end they need to fix the teleporter that they're going to use to teleport down using. to earth <laughs> Because yep. I guess it's broken, but not really because they're using it. And that's sort of how we're going to end up. And eventually they're going to have to come back to uh, Vera. In the meantime, I guess yep. Vera is going to be turning or waking everyone up. Right. And hopefully uh, the human race will continue. Overall, yeah. I mean, I think we both love this episode, right? There's not... It was it was great. The the Even the, the, the monster design was pretty cool. Um, both the beetle, well, mostly the, the kind of beetle waspy thing that we're in looks amazing. The, everything about it was just it was just awesome. Yeah, definitely, definitely my favorite. Uh, one of my favorites of the first series of the classic series. Yeah, uh, definitely up there for me as well. All right. Well, we hope you all enjoyed uh, Ark in Space as much as we did. Uh, let us know if you did by contacting us on either on Twitter, where you can find me at egrissom. Uh, you can find Dan at Dan J N J. There you go. Or you can contact us at the old Doctor Who Show at gmail dot com. The old Doctor Who Show dot com is our website where you can see our schedule and see what episodes we have coming up. The next one we're doing is a quick one. It's a Santaran experiment. Unfortunately, it's not on Netflix, but it is on Hulu Plus. It's only two episodes. So this is an easy one. We should have no uh, <laughs> no trouble getting through this one. Uh, this is one I've I seen, will say. I've seen this before. This, this but... was an easy one. This was an easy one. So Ark in Space was so fast paced. It was four episodes, but that was that flew yeah, by. No, it, I loved. There's really. It was not a flabby story at all. Everything was very yeah, tight. There's I no that. part of it where you'd be like, "Oh, they could have cut back," or that's filler or whatever. It just felt like very tight and 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 well well plotted. Yeah. Um, all right. So next, as I said, next time it's Suntaran Experiment, which is scheduled for us to do it on or release the episode on October 7th. 
So between now and then, you have to uh, to get going. Although, wait, Santaran Experiment is September. I'll try to make that. You and I, Dan, will have to talk because I do have a couple of uh, events between now and then. One of them, Dan and I usually record this on a Sunday, and one of them, I have a, a signing on the Sunday before that, which we will discuss. Hey, Eric, what are you signing? What are you signing and where? I have a signing for Superhero Weekend in uh, a comic store called Comic Fusion in Flemington, New Jersey. It's a charity event, so I encourage everyone to, to go out there. I'm going to be there. I don't know what time I'm going to be there. I don't have a lot of details. Probably like 12 to 4 or something, and I'll be signing whatever I have. So that is uh, Dead Horse and Planet Gigantic and all that stuff. But before then, I'm going to be at Baltimore Comic Con, which is Friday, September 25th to Sunday, the 27th. It's the first time I've ever doing Baltimore Comic Con. So if you're attending, go. If you mention this show, I'll give you a free comic. Uh, that's a guarantee. That I'm pretty much only going to be selling uh, Planet Gigantic, which is an all-ages space adventure book that I do about two kids who crash land on a planet full of giant monsters. I'm going to be in the Kids Love Comics Pavilion, so it's a, it's very much geared towards kids. So I can't really sell Gregory Suicide there uh, easily. <laughs> um, <laughs> however, I will probably have Dead Horse, and, and Dead Horse is appropriate for teens. I mean, it's not sure. like it... Uh, inappropriate and gregory suicide is actually pretty much appropriate as well yeah i'll have those if you want those you can ask me and i'll sell them i'm not going to have them on display uh they were kind enough to invite me to to the show i'm not going to be selling non kid stuff as open as i as i might at other places what about you dan do you have uh, anything to plug i got nothing to you plug got- I just got <laughs> just got just got life. Just living life, man. Dance plugging life left and right. How's your dog? Oh man, still puppy. Such yeah. a puppy. He's yeah. gigantic. Forty five pounds, seven month old puppy. Wow. He's big. Yeah, Jonesy has pretty much destroyed like all of our furniture at this point. Yep. So it's just like yep. man, that was remember we bought that thing just to finally have a nice piece of furniture and not the IKEA junk that we've had for, for our entire life. Yeah, that's ruined. So it, Yeah, we've got a got about four things that is eaten through including an ottoman which is great so you know dogs are awesome our dog went after our ottoman too all right so um we're good all right guys yeah thank you so much wow we went 50 minutes on this not bad sweet all right well hopefully we will see you all oh i guess we have to say that we need reviews and subscriptions so please do that through itunes yeah just do a review on itunes Come yeah. on. Do a review on iTunes, and what will we do for them? We'll mention your name on the podcast. Hey, that's it. That's but, the thing. Yeah, you want to be famous? Yeah, you do. Everybody's listening to the old Doctor Who show. Put your review in. We'll sing your name uh, to mm-hmm. the music. <laughs> Dan yep. will remix it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. All right. Yeah, I'm a little worried. All right, Dan. All right, man. Good seeing you. Thanks a lot, man. Peace. Next time.